July 2nd, the sixth work day of the week, preparation day for the Sabbath. Well, brethren, I suggest that's what you'd be doing is to prepare yourself for the Sabbath this day. And we're in the year of 2010. Well, it's time to get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, our daily walk with Jesus. Day 178 of the year 2010, Jesus tells the parable of the unforgiving debtor. Well, brethren, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down on your pad and paper so you can go back and study this at your own leisure. That way you get much more out of it than what we can give you. Also, I suggest you be able to use the pause button down here in the corner so that you can start and stop this lecture at your own wish. Jesus tells the parable of the unforgiving debtor. To do that, we go to Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 22. Then Peter came to him, that came to Jesus, and asked, Sir, how often should I forgive a brother who sins against me? Seven times? No, Jesus replied. Seventy times seven. The rabbis taught that the people should forgive those who offend them, but only three times. Peter, trying to be especially generous, asked Jesus, If seven, a perfect number, was enough times to forgive someone, forgiven, when Jesus explained that we should forgive others 70 times 7, he meant that we should not even keep track of how many times we forgive someone. If we always forgive those who are truly repentant, no matter how many times they ask, as Christians, we should forgive as we have been forgiven. True forgiveness means we treat the ones we've forgiven as we would want to be treated. As we understand God's mercy, we will want to be like Him. Having received forgiveness, we will pass it on to others. Is there someone you say you have forgiven but still needs your kindness? And hold fast to my name. Oh, Thy world is sweet with prayer. The smoke of incense which came up with prayers of the saints extended up before God. You find that in Revelation chapter 8 and verse 4. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, here we are on the preparation day for the Sabbath. Is that what you're doing? Are you preparing yourself to start worshiping God at sundown on the sixth day? That's when the Sabbath begins, at sundown. Here in Glendale, Arizona, that happens to be 533. 523. Let me check. I have that written down here. If you want to really know, at 523, pardon me, sundown is at 523. That's when the Sabbath begins. And it don't end till sundown on the seventh day of the week. Is that how you look at it? Or are you using the first day of the week? Do you call it that you go to your building, your church, down on the corner. That's Baal Church. That's not me speaking. That's your own Bible speaking. The Lord's Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. You find that throughout the Bible. Never the first day of the week. The first day of the week is mentioned eight times in the New Testament. And check each one of them. They're in italics. Man has added them to confuse you. Do you want to change and follow the Lord? Get down on your knees and repent. Ask for the forgiveness and not listening to God's word, but listening to man's word. 
ask the Father and the Son for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the letter he sent to you. Well, brethren, that's all we're going to have for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.